Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. Welcome back to this informal series on Blender for AI developers. In this video I wanted to talk about modeling a little bit. And I'm not going to go too deep into it because it's quite a broad topic and it can get pretty complicated depending on what you need to do. But I want to teach you some of the fundamentals of creating 3D models in Blender. And this is the scene that you always start out with. You always get a camera, a light, and a cube. And generally, if you're just doing modeling, you can safely delete the camera and the light. And then you're left with an object. And you may be wondering how you start with nothing and get to something. Well, you always start with a primitive object. And that's why a cube is generally placed in your scene, uh, because a cube is a good starting point for a lot of different shapes. We have a bunch of other options too, not too many I should say, but there are some other options for what you can start with. And those are in the Add menu, under Mesh. You have a plane, which is, I'll just create these and you can see what they look like. So this is our cube, and I'll just move this over here. A plane is just a flat shape right here, and it has four vertices right here instead of the eight vertices that are in the cube. Then, let's try and just get these out of the way as we go. Then you have a circle, and I was playing with this earlier, so as you, when you first create it, it's probably going to have about 16 vertices down here, and this little menu here will start out hidden uh, unless you've already expanded it. But this is where you get to choose options for your shapes as you create them. So you have a little bit of control as you're making these. So this is a circle. And by default, the fill is nothing. And the radius is one. But as you saw, you can change these things so that it starts out a little different than just default. So maybe I'm actually working on something that needs six sides. Well, this is a great way to do it. I can start with this, and then I can choose whether I want this to be filled with anything or not. So an n-gon just means fill it with uh, a full face here, and it's going to figure out the triangles later. Versus an, a triangle fan, which means that it's going to have a central point here. And I switched into wireframe mode so you can see that it includes these edges right here. So there's one point in the center and then an edge going to each. And if I up the vertices, you'll see that it creates these sort of uh, pie pieces here that will divide up this shape. And as you go, as you do more experimentation with modeling, you'll learn when to do each one of these different types, but I just wanted to show that for now. I'll switch back into this view. What else do we have? We have a UV sphere, okay, so this is a sphere, and you can change how many segments it gets, how many rings it gets. As it gets higher, uh, my computer's struggling a little bit to do this, so now it's frozen up, so I'm actually probably not going to keep this shape, um, but I wanted to show you that. You can, of course, change the radius, and uh, you can even change the location, though I generally don't do that. Oh, I'm going to regret changing that. My my computer is struggling. And I have a pretty strong computer, so the fact that it's struggling is probably a sign that you should not do 217 segments and 500 rings. I'm just going to delete that. Then we have an icosphere. This one is a little different. Um, I won't go into the reasons why it behaves differently, but obviously you can see it looks different. And you can change the number of subdivisions so that it can get pretty, pretty detailed or not. And then what else do we have? A cylinder. So this one I use all the time as well, depending on the shape I'm trying to make. And of course you can change how many edges it's got, how many vertices around this edge, I should say, and the depth and the radius and even the rotation. I haven't showed you that yet, but that can be helpful depending on how you want the shape to be. So you just write in a number that you want. And then, what else do we have? We have a cone and a torus. Honestly, I never start with them. Um, I don't have much use for cones or toruses, so I'm not even going to bother doing that. You can do something like this monkey, which 
uh, is, I guess, useful for showing off materials or something like that or quick tests, but you're never going to start a model from this. Uh, and then there's a few different things in here, like curves. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, surfaces, metaballs. These are all interesting. Text you might use at some point. That's pretty simple. Uh, you can even go into edit mode and change this. And then you can do things in the settings over here, like extrude the geometry of it. So you can make sort of a thick text. Uh, and so that's, that's all fine and good. And those are kind of the primitives that I think are worth covering. Just taking a quick look at this. Armatures, we're not going to talk about that. Empties might be somewhat interesting. Empties are basically like an object that has no geometry. And the reason why those can be useful is if you need to use them as like a pivot point or a reference point or something like that. So if we create one of these and then maybe I wanted to make this a child of this then I could move this around and then this would move with it. Or I could rotate this around this point and it would rotate the whole thing. So just wanted to mention that as well. So we've talked about all these primitives and uh, you might be wondering how you can actually turn these primitives into something interesting. So in this video, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I'm going to, first of all, just hit A to select all these, X to delete them. And why don't I turn on my screencast keys really quick? Sorry, it's annoying that, that turns off for me every time I restart Blender. Uh, the shortcut for this add menu, by the way, is Shift A. So I'm going to create a cube here. And then I just want to show you probably the most common two things that I use if I had to pick, uh, and that's extrude and inset. Okay, so when you click on an object, and then you hit tab to go into edit mode. You have the ob options to work with vertices, edges, or faces. So a vertex, you know, you choose one vertex and move it around. You can always click right, or the right click on the mouse will undo what you just did, so to speak, sort of cancel the move that you're doing. You can do this one. And then if you move this around, I'm just using the G key uh, to move that around. Okay, so it moves the full edge and then the face like that. And just for a quick shortcut, the one, two, and three keys on your uh, on the top row on your keyboard, one, two, three, you can see those switching between those two modes. And you can even, I believe, select multiple of these. Yeah, if you hold down shift, then now you've got some options you can, you can work with both, though I rarely, if ever, use it at the same time. So now that we've talked about that really quick, I'm going to switch into face mode and show you what extrude is. So you click one of these faces, and then you hit the E key, and that's short for extrude, and then it sort of brings this out. And there's over here, you could do this here too. You can click this and then click extrude, and then you have this sort of tool right here that you can use to pull it out if you're more of a UI buttons type of person instead of a hotkeys button. Hotkeys person, I mean. Uh, so now we've, we've created this shape, and one thing I want to point out, if I kind of zoom inside of this thing, it's going to be kind of hard to, to see, but there we go. We can see there's no face inside, so it has basically sort of blown this out like maybe like uh, if you've ever seen glass being blow, blown, uh, there's no wall in between the two shapes usually. They, if they're making something expand then they are expanding this shape so that the inside is completely open. And if you were to create a face inside, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. You might have some weird issues later. So it's not really designed to have faces that are on the inside because those wouldn't be visible anyway. So that's extrude. And then I wanted to show you inset as well, really quick on these faces. So that, the you can click on this one right here. Okay, so that creates a face like that, and you can't really see anything with it. But now, if I went back into extrude mode, I can raise something like that. You know, maybe we're starting to look like a very simple uh, building or something. Uh, you can also use the I key to inset. 
And I'm glad that happened to me because I want to show you something. When you are using the hotkeys, the, the shortcut keys like this, if your mouse is too close to the center or the pivot of where you're doing something, you really don't have many options. So what you have to do here is basically right click to cancel it. But I want to show you really quick, this shape is actually there, or usually it is. Uh, let me see. I may have, I may have, um, may have managed to cancel it safely. But if you just do an extrusion like this, I'll show you, and then you right click, the sh the face is there. See there, you can see it, but you can't tell. So that's something to just be aware of. If you do these extrusions and inset faces, then you cancel by hitting the right click. It's still there, so you definitely want to undo and make sure you get back to a safe spot. So now I'll show you that with the I key. And if you hold your, your, your cursor further away, look at all this space I have to play with to change the, the inset amount. It gives me so much more space. In fact, I can even go way into this like wacky, it's gone way beyond where it should be. But there's a difference between whether I start here and I have this tiny amount of space to work with or whether I start out here and then I've got lots of room to play with. So it really just depends on where you start your mouse cursor. And even more important than that is if I were to do this over here, let's say I was trying to extrude with the E key, nothing happens at all. So that's because your mouse needs to be in this window. You don't need to click into the window. Your mouse just needs to hover over the window where you want to do something interesting. So you can see that there's lots of things you can do just by insetting and extruding. And once you've done these extrusions, you can even change things about them. So you can switch into edge mode and maybe I'm going to do G and X and move this like this. And then when you extrude and it's uh, not along one of these uh, axes, then it's going to go along the normal uh, vector coming out of this shape. So you can make some very interesting shapes this way just by doing extrusions. I also want to show you what happens when you extrude an edge. So let's say we start with this edge right here and we extrude it. You'll see that now I've got this sort of flap that's coming off the side. Well, that might be okay, but then let me lock it to the Y axis by hitting Y. Now I've got this shape coming out, but there's not really a good way for me to connect it to anything else right now. So in order to do that, and you know, you don't necessarily need to uh, worry about this too much right now, but I would have to delete this face. So I hit X and then it gives me options of what I want to delete. I want to delete this face. And then I might have to switch back into edge mode and then do another extrusion along the Y here and then sort of build out this shape. And while we're here, I might as well show you this interesting thing you can do once you've created a shape like this. Right now it's kind of open air. We don't want that. We'd like to close it off. You can select another edge. So I did a shift select. So now I've got these two edges selected and you want to make sure you don't have any extra stuff selected because weird things will happen. But now I can hit the F key and that will create a face. So it's connected those two with the face. And then if I want to create another one here to here, I can do it like that. Although my understanding is that even though it looks like these are connected, they are not connected. So I'm going to undo that. And what I generally recommend is that you select all three of the, or all four of these and hit F so that you make sure that it uses all the edges there. And then you can even uh, select one edge. I know this is maybe a little bit uh, too much to, to teach right now, but, but you can select one edge and then hit F and it will intelligently fill the next square. Um, and the reason I show you that is because if you've selected, or if you have like two in a row and you delete these faces, okay, so now we've got this nice shape that's, that's part of the geometry and I want to fill this instead, I can switch into edge mode and then I can hit F, F, and it will fill in that space. And I literally just learned that like 
I don't know, last week or something. I've been using Blender for years, and I had no idea how easy that was. So I, I did want to show that really quick. All right, so this video is getting long, so I'm going to wrap this up. But hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use extrusion and insets to uh, do some interesting shapes and also to, in to use the F key to create some faces in the event that you end up uh, creating some weird geometry that you need to fix.